others healthy around you. She's not here today because she's doing her best to stay home and healthy as well. This morning, the gospel brings us a familiar story of healing. We know the story of Jesus making a muddy paste out of his spit, and smearing it on the eyes of a man who was born blind. Of course, after he washes the mud away, his sight is restored, but he doesn't get a celebration for his healing. Instead, he gets questioned first by the locals and then by the leaders. And then his parents are questioned, and then he is questioned again. That story is very familiar, but I want to talk today about the end of the story. After the religious leaders are done with him, they drive him out of the temple. This is when Jesus suddenly reappears in the story and finds the man. Jesus has one simple question. Do you believe in the Son of Man? After the whole encounter with Jesus, after a miracle, and after being driven from the temple, Jesus only wants to know, do you believe? There's no requirement of a prayer parade or a baptism or even a worship service. There's only belief in Jesus and the man's life changed. Now there are lots of things that this gospel story can tell us about the character of God. But right now, this week, with the way things are, one thing stood out to me in a big way. The encounter, the miracle, the belief depend on Jesus and not on the temple or the building. We often hear the phrase, Jesus, that the church isn't a building. And right now, we get to show it. When we can't worship together, study together, serve together, or take communion together, I think it's time to put our not-the-walls theory about the church to the test. Can we still believe? Can we still encounter Jesus for ourselves? And can we still bring others to an encounter with Jesus? In last week's sermon that you can now find on YouTube, Pastor Sally talked about fear and the nasty side effect of fear making us focus on ourselves inward. So this week, let's keep focusing outward. I want us to think about the ways that we can love our neighbors, right now, in this time, even from a distance. Simple ways are to listen to the advice of medical professionals, so keep washing your hands and not touching your face and stay home. But that's the easy part for some of us. Jesus says at the beginning of today's story that we must work the works of him who sent me. It seems like the perfect time to ask God to wake us up to what he's doing in the world and how we might join him in these unique times. We're going to have to get creative, but let's work the works of our God, even while maintaining healthy distance. I know I can't ask you a discussion question and make you talk to your neighbors today, but I'm going to ask you questions anyway, and I'm going to ask you to think about it, and maybe you can talk about it within your family, or maybe you can call someone from church, or maybe you can email the church office and tell us what you think. So what is it that you can do right now, today, to be the church outside of these walls? How will you encounter Jesus, and how can you help others encounter him? Can you share your encounter? And finally, how can you love your neighbor even from a distance? Pastor Sally wants me to tell you that you can send your uh, responses to the church office email address, and that we'd love to hear from you. Amen. Jesus, see, 
Thank you. 